Good morning and happy Lord's Day. It's a, it's another Sunday, another day to to just to give to the Lord and to to honor Him. Um, I hope you're having a good day. And uh, today I'm glad you joined us for, for our teaching. We're going to be going to the book of Isaiah, chapter one, verse eighteen to twenty today. And uh, so uh, that's what we'll look at. But before we do that, let's just pray and ask God to help with this. And uh, we usually do this in our in our teaching here on Sundays. Uh, I often don't do it in my midweek uh, videos, but um, the reason we do that is just to ask God to help me speak, but also to give you an opportunity just to ask God to, to teach you through whatever is said here. It's coming from His Word, so it's His Word. Um, and I'm going to say things, but we want Him to actually be the one to teach our hearts. And so that's the reason we do that. So just let's just do that for a moment. I will encourage you in your own heart just to ask God to, to open up your heart to Him. So, Lord, I just pray uh, that you would speak to us through your word today and that what we talk about today would be meaningful and that we would apply it to ourselves and find a way to do it and that we would honor you in these things. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in Isaiah chapter 1 today, verse 18 to 20. Um, We've started working our way through Isaiah uh, a few weeks back, and I love this prophet. He's he's, uh, got such such inspiring verses. And this is actually one of those verses that does kind of inspire me personally. Uh, I really like it. And uh, so I'm going to read it to you, and that's our focus. But then in a few minutes, I'm going to draw on some verses that are ahead of it as well. But but here's what it says. This is God talking, and he says this. He says, Come now, and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. If you consent and obey, you will eat the best of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Truly, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, uh, as I said, I find this very inspiring verse. I, I always have. It's uh, because I like those, that part there in the middle where it said, you know, though your sins are as scarlet, you will be as white as snow. Right? Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. And there's this idea, you know, the image, I guess, if, you, if you're thinking this was written, th- you know, thousands of years ago. And so in that time, you know, what they're talking about is, a, is like a, a cloth or a garment that has been basically bloodied. That, that, that or, or, or as we're going to find out, or your skin that has become bloodied by something. And though that though that bloodying has occurred, uh, and that's a stain that God's going to, you know, what we're going to find out how He's going to do that. But what God's going to do is He's going to cleanse that away, and you're going to be that you know the cloth is going to be white as though it had never been stained. Is the idea as though it had never been stained, and uh, and that's that's kind of cool, you know, like <clears throat> because I don't know about you, but. I I am quite aware in my own life of the many times I have failed and the many sins I have had in my life and the the shame of those things or the the just the the how much I regret those things and to think of them as part of my life and part of my history and part of who I am it it's a it's something I'm not proud of and to think that God actually does something in my life that can separate me from that and that those sins that I had in my life, that I can be so separated from them, it's as if they never happened. I mean, that's that's a very hopeful thought to me. I, I love it. And that's what verse 18 is, is really emphasizing there. And it's it's something for all of us to look at and say, man, I want that. I want to have that. Because hopefully all of us can realize there are things in, in our lives. I'm not, I'm not the only one. Like, I'm sure you also, in your life, you could probably look back, probably not that far, and you'll see things like, yeah, that's, that's kind of a stain in my life. That's, that's a stain in my character. That's a stain in my, my history, a stain in my, that, that's me. It's not someone else. I'm not, not just, I'm not just talking about when we've been victimized by someone else's sin. I mean, I have my own sin, my own things that I... I can see, and I'm sure you can too, things that you you wish you had done differently and you know it wasn't right. And, and so then a, a verse like this comes and it's just so full of hope. Like, God, you can do that. You can actually erase erase that, as it were. Like, you can make it make it make make me pure again. I can be pure again. And that's what this is. It's a, it's a promise of God for purification. God, you know, we often talk about God, how can I be forgiven of my sins? And how can, you know, payment be made to cover my sins? And that's all very important because we all want to be saved. We all want salvation. We want to go to heaven. And so that's that's important. Um, but then there's the greater promise even still of going even further, not only paying them, but 
actually like purifying you of your sin. Not just forgiving you, but cleansing you of your sin. And he's not just talking about a covering here, right? He's not just saying, I'll cover your sins over. I'll hide them somewhere. What he's saying is your sins, though they're like scarlet, they're going to be white as snow. Like This is a purification, right? <clears throat> and God has the power to do that. God has the ability to, to not just pay for your sins, not just to cover you with his grace, but to actually purify you of the sin and of the thing inside of you that caused the sin in the first place, the reason you sinned. He can purify your character, purify your being in such a way. It's an amazing thought, and it's it's something I really long for in my life. Um, but there's some things we need to understand in order for this to be something that we can experience. We need to understand that that, that purification that God can give us, it, it has to come when we come to a point where we feel helpless. Or actually, let me rephrase that where we know that we're helpless. We have to come to a place where we don't just feel it, but we actually realize it. It's like, man, I am helpless. I am stained with sin. And I need God to make me white as snow. I need him to do that. And that's part of this process of, of and why God says, you know, come, let us reason together. Though your sins are, you know, so what, what is he talking about? Well, this, well let's, let's work this out. Right, you are helpless. I'll make I'll make it work, you know. Or when it seems so bad, we might say, "Well, I would say no, not that it seems so bad, that it is so bad that we come to a recognition of my sins are so bad." Um, when we when we use words like "I feel this" or "It seems that way," we're trying to soften the blow. But what we really need to do is we need to just come in and say, "Listen, I know I'm a sinner, um, and I and I know my sin is bad. It's really bad. It's not good." And when we come with, to God with this recognition of this and this humility about this and just say, here I am, my sins are as scarlet, my sins are red like crimson, I am stained with them. It really is the case and I'm trying to wash them away, but, but I need you to do the work. That's when God's power comes and what God's saying in this verse is that, listen, though your sins are as scarlet, you will be, you'll be, you'll be made like, like wool, like snow. You know, and it's, I'll, I'll do this in you. <clears throat> it's an amazing promise. That's why I find it so wonderful verse. When you think about this and you look at your own life and you think about the, you know, the sin in your life, and maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never done a self-assessment of, of sin. I, I know there's a, there's a real tendency in our culture, in our day, to try and justify ourselves in every way we can, to try and make it seem like the only time I'm ever bad is because of somebody else or some, some situation that was beyond my control and I could hardly be blamed. And We'd rather rush to a victim stance rather than saying, no, I'm actually the one, I, I'm the one who's caused the problem. And, uh, and so we, we find that in today's culture, people are really, quite often, they don't want to ever do a self, an honest self-assessment of, hey, here's my faults, here's my failures. Um, but that's, that's a part of the process we have to come to terms with. Or we can never actually have this promise realized in our life. Uh, if, God, if, if God's offering this to us and he's saying, let's reason this out. He's not saying, okay, listen, I'll, I'll believe this and you can believe whatever you want. He's saying, let us talk about this. Your sins are as crimson. And so we need, we need to be able to do that and go, okay, God, I'm going to recognize in myself that I have sin. And so here's, here's some sins to think about, just some things to think about, things that we need to be purified of, not just forgiven of, but purified of. We need this gone from our life. You know, sins like having wrath in our heart, like the, the, this desire for vengeance and to, to harm those that have hurt us or to harm, harm people that make us angry or, that have, or whatever. And we have this, this inside of us, sometimes we have this sense of wrath, right? We want, our, we want harm to come to people that have, have hurt us in some way. That's not godly. That's actually sin. That's, that's a violence of our heart. That, that's not what God wants. That will be a crimson on us. Uh, that will be a stain of red on us. And, and God's saying, I want to forgive you of that, but I also want to cleanse you of that so that you're not full of wrath anymore. Instead, I want you to be full of mercy. I want to fill you with forgiveness and, and the ability to, to love even your enemy. And so you see that, that that's a thing, right? Like, or another thing would be lust. I mean, in, in, in so much of our culture, lust is just, it's just almost considered like it's a, a virtue, and it's not. It's a vice. And we think about, about lust in life where you just want to, to, to use others for your, your own gratification. And, and, you know, to, to have, we usually think of lust as a sexual thing, and most times it is. But, 
but it, it's just it's this idea of just using others for your own pleasure and and it's a it's kind of a selfish thing and and that's a sin and god's like, this is not good this is not a good thing it's a stain on you and on your character and on your personhood and when we come to god we say forgive me of my lustfulness um, and God's like, I will forgive you, but I also want to cleanse you of the lustfulness. I don't want you to go on in your lustfulness. I don't want to just say, I forgive you that you lusted. I want to help. I want to make you white as snow, take away the stain of lust. And so that you are a loving person who is selfless rather than, rather than just using others, but that you're, you're a person who truly loves and cares and values other people. Um, you know, or our appetites. Sometimes our appetites take over and we, we pursue our appetites and fill ourselves in every way we can and, and just gratify all of the urges we have in life. This isn't a good thing. This isn't virtuous. This is sin. And, and God would come to us and say, I would forgive you of that, but I want to cleanse you of that and replace your, your pursuit of your appetites with a pursuit of, with an with a ability to be satisfied in the world. Um, you know, we can, there's a whole bunch of things we could, we could talk about coveting the desire of having, uh, having the, the constant desire to have. And, and God says, I want to replace your coveting with, with gratitude or, you know, the selfishness we have that can cause us to be lazy and improduct, unproductive and, and self-indulgent. And he said, I want to replace that selfishness with, with the ability to sacrifice and to give and to produce for others and to help others, you know, take the greed out of our hearts that would, that would constantly be trying to acquire more and more and more. And, and you would say, I want to, I want to cleanse that and replace it with generosity so that you're giving uh, the pride in our life that would cause us to worship ourselves and to think of ourselves first and become narcissists. And God's like, I want to, I want to forgive you, but I also want to cleanse you of the pride so that you're filled with humility instead. And there's a whole bunch of things. We, we could go on with a huge list. I named these these few just to, to try and get you to think about it. When you look at yourself and you look at the things in your life, we're not just talking about when when we when we do physically obvious things like someone who robs a, a bank, you know, and we're like, okay, he sinned. But we're talking about even before that, when the person in their heart was full of greed and malice and desired to rob the bank, and inside of them there was an impurity of character. And God's like, I want to forgive you of even that, but I want I'm going to cleanse you of that. That can't be in you. That's got to go. And He wants to to cleanse us and make our hearts pure. This idea of a pure heart is a is a something you never hear people talk about anymore. We 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 tell people to behave, but we don't very often tell people the need to have an inner motivation, a purity within us that would be what what brings us to good behavior. We we can't accomplish righteousness simply by behaving a certain way. It has to come from the heart and the inside. And God comes to us and says, "I want a pure purify you and make you pure in this now <clears throat> i don't do a lot of titles for sermons but i would entitle this sermon god's reasonable ultimatum um, because that's that's what these verses are saying and just to just to read them again or to to remind you of them again uh it's come now and let us reason together god says uh let's reason together that word reason there he's actually it's it's not just uh let's think this out it's got that idea but it's actually like Let's understand this together. Let's understand what's happening. Um, and so it's reasonable in the sense of what I'm about to say, what I'm about to say to you as this ultimatum, it is reasonable. It is something that is right. Think about it. And so that's kind of what he's saying. And then he goes on. He says, though your sins are as scarlet, uh, they will be as white as snow. Though they're like red, red like crimson, they will be like wool. And then he says, if you consent and obey, you will eat the best of the land, right? You'll have, you'll be filled, you'll, you'll, he'll take, he'll bless you. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Truly the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And that last part, truly the mouth of the Lord has spoken, is, is like God's sort of signing this ultimatum saying, this is me, I'm saying this to you, this is, this is me. And so it's, a, it's an ultimatum. He's like, obey and live. Re rebel and die. It's like, there's your choices, two choices. And, of course, once again, in our culture, ultimatums, we don't like ultimatums. And, and you can finally kind of feel your back come up and you're like, well, who, you know, I don't, I don't like, I'm not going to respond. All, well, God doesn't care about what you feel about <laughs> ultimatums. He's going to give it anyways. He's God and he's saying, you've got two choices. You know, you, you have sinned against me. You are in the wrong. Let's, let's understand this. Let's reason together. Understand you are in the wrong. Here it is. You will either obey what I'm saying here. 
and live, or you will rebel against what I'm saying here, and you will die. But it uses these other words too. It says obey, if you will consent and obey, right? If you, but if you refuse and rebel. So it's like that. those words, consent and refuse. Why did he include that? He didn't just say obey and rebel. He put it in our court. He put it there and he said, listen, you can accept this, what I'm giving, what I'm offering to you, what I'm saying to you. You can accept this and enter into it and obey. Or you can refuse this and rebel against this and, and die. Hmm. Well, what is it I'm consenting to? What is it he's telling us to consent to? So we think about what God's saying here, and we think that he's, uh, he's telling us to, or asking us to consent, commanding us to obey, uh, off, allowing us to refuse, but saying there's a consequence because it will be a rebellion. And uh, so what's our part? Well, we go back a few verses. So what we've been reading is verses 18 to 20. But if we just go back a couple of verses, we're going to read, uh, we can read the whole first chapter. It'll give you the context. But, but sufficient is for us just to go back to verse 15. He says, so when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you multiply prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. That's interesting. Red. That's the blood we're talking about. This is the context of what he's saying to us, the promise of purity that he's giving us. Your hands are covered with blood. I, I'm not going to listen to your prayers because your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Reprove the ruthless. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. That last part is a, is a set of examples of what he's talking about. But the key is up there in verse 15 and 16. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. And then we read down to verse 18. Right there. Come now. Let's understand this together. Let's reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, you will be white as snow. What's he saying? He says, if you'll consent and wash yourself, purify yourself, I'll make sure you do get clean. I'll purify you. It's a pretty good offer, right? He's, he's saying, you know, com he's commanding, wash yourself. You're covered, you're, you're covered with blood. Wash yourself. And even though you're so stained with blood, there's so much blood. But still, you know what? If you wash yourself, well, I'll make sure that you actually, that it works and that you're really cleansed. He will cleanse you. That's an amazing gift. God's gift of purity to us. It's something God wants for us and he demands for us. And then he also, at the same time, offers us that it's something you can have if you accept it, if you consent to it, then he'll, he'll give you this offer. If you'll obey, he'll do this thing in your life. <clears throat> we have to wash ourselves. We have to start this process knowing that we're not capable of doing it ourselves, but we have to be the one that ceases to do evil and learn to do good, that we start down this road and we say, God, I want to be better. And God says, okay. Good. Let's make you better. Uh, and what he does is he brings along this effect of making our sins ineffective. Uh, this is the, this is the idea, the stain of sin. Like I said, we look back on our life, we look back on all the failures we've had, and you go, man, that's the effect of those failures and those 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 evils, downright evils that I've had in my heart, that has corrupted me and 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 made me impure. And I want to be free of that. And I'm trying, but I just can't get there. And God's saying, I'll get you there. And not only that, I'll get you there so well that it will be as if you never did those things. I'll take you all that way as if you never were that person. And that's God's gift of purity for us, that we can be purified and cleansed of all unrighteousness. Why would anyone ever refuse this? It's a good question. Why would anybody ever say no to God with regard to this? It's important to understand, this is an ultimatum. It's not really just an offer. I mean, there's an offer in it, but it's an ultimatum. Like God is saying, it's one or the other. There's no middle ground on this. You can't just refuse and, and then pray to me and think I'm going to answer, or refuse and then think you're going to live with me in my kingdom forever, that you're, gonna, that you're not going to, you know, that you're not going to bear my wrath. You, you have to choose this. Uh, but why would anybody not? Is it because that sometimes we, well, we just... We just don't want God. And yet we want all of his blessings. And we get mad with God because he doesn't give us our blessings, his blessings. 
but he says, well, here's the way. Here's the way to bless things. And we're like, no, I don't want, I don't want that. And so we, we decide to live in our sin and live in the in the stain, rather than turn to God. Is that why, or is it that there are others of us we, we're just struggling with it? It's like I gotta want to be right with you, but I just keep getting hooked by this stuff. And is it because we don't really understand that God is is God and that He can actually free us from this? Is it that we we listen to lies, or is it that we just haven't bothered to actually do? Our part is that we're we're just hoping that it'll happen to us one day instead of doing what he said, which is washing myself. That I start to wash myself. I read God's word, as it says in the New Testament, that the washing of the word is what cleanses us. Right? We read God's word. We hide His word in our heart. We take it into ourselves, and we say, God, I'm going to do the process of washing myself of the impurities of that sin, knowing that it's Your power that makes me clean. But I'm going to take your power, your word, and your promises, and I'm going to internalize them, and I'm going to make decisions now and consent to things that you will do in me so that I will be made pure. Is, is it that why so many Christians seem to live still in impurity? We, we don't realize that we need to do this? We really do. You need to understand, I need to understand, that I have an obligation in Christ. If I'm a believer, I have an obligation in Christ to wash myself, to consecrate myself, as a, to use a big term, consecrate, to sanctify myself, to use a big term. But these ideas of, of cleansing myself of these things, knowing I need God's power to do it, but that I take that active step and say, the things in my life that are impure, those things, I want to wash them out. So the things that cause me to be wrathful, I want to wash those things out of my life. When I see that, that this makes me wrathful or that I, I'm harboring this resentment and it's making me wrathful, I want, to, I want to get rid of those things. I want to forgive. I want to figure out how to do that. Because I want to read God's word and apply it to my life and, and learn to do these things because I want that wrathfulness out of me. And then God says, okay, good. That's good. Though your sin is like crimson, it will be white as snow. And he does the work in us. Right? Where I say, God, I want the lust out of my life. I don't want to be this lustful person anymore. I don't want to be drawn to a constant desire for these things and, and, and these indulgences. And God, I just don't want to be like this anymore. And so you start to find ways. You read his word. You, you own those truths. You bring them into your life. You stop giving yourself permission. And whatever the, the triggers, to, I hate that word, but whatever the triggers we have in our life that, that move us to lust, we go, God, I want those out. I want to wash those out of my life because I don't want to be lustful. And God says, okay, good. Though your skin is like, your, your, uh, your sin, your skin, though your sin is like crimson, you'll be white as wool. Right? He'll, he'll get us there. But we have to be making those steps. We have to be taking that, that effort and saying, God, I want to consent to your cleansing and I want to obey and wash myself. And so whether it's the appetites or the coveting or the selfishness or the greed or the pride or whatever things are in our life, we need to get those out. Now, I'm not just saying we need to get rid of those sins, but we need to get rid of the things that cause us to sin. So what is it that makes that happen in you? Is it is it that you're watching, you know, do you watch a lot of movies and, and in the movies you're always watching movies where, where vengeance is occurring and so you've kind of conditioned your heart to think that vengeance is a good thing and so you, you live with a vengeful heart, a wrathful heart? Well, then you need to you need to wash those movies out of your life and say, I'm going to stop watching stories like that. They're, they're creating in me a... Uh, an attitude that's that's sinful or is it is it the internet you're on the internet and you're finding pornography and it's causing lust in you and and so do you need to well do you need to wash the internet out of your life or or some version some part of it or something like is there something you need to do there you know is there something that's causing you to be greedy or to be lazy or to be you know all these things is there something happening in your life that moves you to this place because when you find out what those things are, then you realize that this is this is causing impurity in me. And it's not always going to be something that's a sin, but it leads you to sin. And you're going to have to go, you know what, i, I got to wash this thing out of my life because it leads me into, into sin. It's an impurity in me, and I don't, I, I don't want this anymore. Uh, and so you have to wash that away. Uh, an example, a personal example, would be I, I had to stop. I had to stop being on Facebook. Facebook was causing me to have bad thoughts about people. <laughs> I was getting angry and I was 
and it was just it wasn't good and i and i was finding myself increasingly getting frustrated and i was like oh wait now this isn't the this isn't the attitude god wants me to have and so i had to i had to wash that out of my life and and it's like god just cleanse me of that i don't want that in my life and so sometimes it requires some some hard decisions some sacrificial decisions where we say you know this this dirt in me is causing sin and i don't want that anymore so god i'm going to wash that away and then i'm going to rely on your power to fill me up cleanse me of the sin and all the stain that comes with that so that i can be free from this and that i can then eat the best of the land because i've consented and i've obeyed that's the idea of this wonderful promise you will be white as snow that's pretty cool and god we we really want this so today I pray for anyone who's listening and for myself that God, please help us in this process, uh, teach us to be obedient. I pray that everyone who listens to me will consent and obey. Um, and God, do your work and may you fulfill this promise in us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and uh, keep on in, in him. See you next time.